What is design thinking? I like to think about it in two parts in order to simplify the definition. The first being just a mindset. It's an ideology of approaching every problem in a user-centered way. It's that simple. Now where the complexity comes in is in that second part of the definition, which is the six step process that most people know. Now these six steps are only there to help you practice that ideology or methodology of user-centered design. So what are these six steps? The first step is empathize. You wanna pull qualitative data, like user interviews, direct observation, contextual inquiry, diary studies, and understand what your real user's need is. And then we get to step two, defining. Now, a lot of people like to think about coming up with ideas in the opposite. So come up with a ton of different ideas and then narrow. Design thinking flips this on its head. It says, let's come up and define the problem before we even consider the solutions. This is step two, the definition of the problem, what user need you and your team want to satisfy. Once you know the problem statement from step two, we bring that into step three, ideation. This is when we start to consider the wide range of potential solutions. We generate crazy wild ideas and then slowly start to narrow them down. So once we have all of these ideas from step three, we move them into step four, prototyping. This is when our ideas start to manifest for the first time. We can test them with end users and we can start to iterate until they're at a place where they represent what the end product may be. And then we go into step five and this is testing. This is traditionally what Nielsen Norman Group is so well known for. Testing ideas in order to make sure the user knows how to use them and that they truly resonate with their needs. And then we get into step six. Now this is the design doing of the design thinking. You can't do it without it. You have to implement that idea. Put the vision into effect so then it actually touches an end user's life. That said, even though those six steps are often presented and taught linearly, I want you to remember you can practice them and should practice them dynamically. Adapt them to your needs. Our field already has so many different terms and processes, so why introduce yet another thing that's new? Design thinking benefits extend far beyond the process itself. It fosters collaboration, it helps create design artifacts that you can return to, and most importantly, it gives you a tangible way to always make sure you're keeping the user at the center of your products. Now, nothing in design thinking is new. Instead, it's pulling methodology from all of the different genres that have existed much longer and applying them in a new way. Next time you're problem solving, think about the design thinking process. Is there a better way to keep the user at the center of every decision you're making?